China suffered a heavy sell-off this week. The bloodbath for Chinese equities extended on Tuesday with the Hang Seng in Hong Kong shedding another 5.7%, reaching the lowest close since February of 2016. Having slumped 11% on Monday, its tech index fell another 8.1% on Tuesday with fears there's more downside to come. More than $460 billion have been wiped from China's tech sector this year, and the negativity has spread beyond China's borders, with chip makers in Europe taking a hit. A toxic combination of rising COVID cases and China's stance towards Russia and Ukraine has prompted international investors to shun Chinese equities. This led to a harsh assessment from analyst at JP Morgan, which downgraded 28 Chinese internet companies, including Alibaba and Tencent, to underweight, labeling them as uninvestable over the next 12 months. Let's take a look now at the chart of the Hang Seng, a relatively long-term chart here, which goes back to before the pandemic. We can see that since the peak in February of 2021, the index has shed around 40% in just over a year. Losses have sharply accelerated this year, with Hang Seng down around 25% since the peak in January. Taking a longer term view, we can see that since the COVID driven sell off at the start of the pandemic, the index attempted to reinstate an uptrend, staging strong gains in 2020. However, after peaking in 2021, the Hang Seng resumed its longer term downtrend. And that's been in place since the highs in 2018, when the index was trading above 33,000. Now the index looks as though it's on track to reach half that level. It's now broken below 19,000 with the potential for a move down towards 18,500 as the next round number level to watch. Oil prices have been under pressure this week, shedding more than 7% during Tuesday's session to reach two-week lows, with Brent crude, the global benchmark, breaking below psychological support at $100. The prospect of a diplomatic solution towards Russia's military aggression against Ukraine would help ease the world's energy supply shock that sent commodities soaring. Although no progress has been announced, the two sides were engaging in the fourth round of talks on Monday. Meanwhile, on the demand side for oil, fears about an aggressive policy response from Beijing to China's COVID outbreak has raised the prospect of much weaker demand for oil from the world's second largest economy. Taking a look now at the chart of Brent crude, it's been incredible to see the sheer volatility lately. Since December until the peak last week, we saw a rally of more than 100%. Remember, oil prices were close to zero at the height of the pandemic in 2020. Now, last week, they approached $140 a barrel. And now we've seen another wild swing in the opposite direction, with Brent breaking back into double digits, pushing below $100. This is a very difficult market at the moment, with some extreme moves even by historic standards. $100 remains a key level to watch. If it pushes and holds below that level on a sustained basis, that could pave the way for further declines. It was a difficult start to the week for Rio Tinto, with the stock languishing at the bottom of the FTSE 100, down by almost 4% both on Monday and on Tuesday. Rio Tinto announced plans to acquire the remaining 49% of Canada's Turquoise Hill on Monday for around $2.7 billion. This represents a premium of about a third of Turquoise Hill's closing price on Friday. Following the recent surge in commodity prices, the deal could help Rio to expand its copper and gold mining activities via the Oli Tolgoy project, which is 66% owned by Turquoise Hill. Despite being Rio's most important growth project, the Mongolian mine has also been a serious source of chaos, hit by delays, ballooning costs and disputes with the Mongolian government. Let's take a look now at the chart of Rio Tinto because the stock staged impressive gains from November lows until the March highs. Despite the global market volatility, the mining sector outperformed with gains accelerating towards the end of February. However, since the start of this month, there's been a brutal sell-off with the stock gapping sharply lower, reversing much of the prior uptrend. In fact, the stock has now come close to breaking below key support at the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level at 51.07% with a break below potentially paving the way for further declines, and a move down towards the 78.6% Fib level, which would require a break below psychological support at 50, and a move down to 47.70. Meanwhile, on the upside, look for resistance at the 50% Fib level, that's at 53.44. In order to believe the selling could be coming to an end, we'll be looking for a break above that level on a sustained basis.